On a three and a half week coaster trip across the country during the summer, you're bound to run into some bad weather. The first half of my 2018 trip was great. The second half, not so much. The second day of the second half is where the weather really started wreaking havoc, and that's the day that we split between Knobles in Ellisburg, Pennsylvania, and Dorney Park in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Today, I'll be looking back at this very memorable day at both these parks on Tuesday, July 17th, 2018. We woke up that day in Hershey, and the weather was really nice. We had about an hour and a half drive up to Ellisburg, and we knew that it would probably fall apart on the way up there. And it absolutely did. This was an epic storm that bombarded the entire East Coast and was even causing a lot of flight cancellations, including that of my wife and Sophie, who were supposed to go to New York that day. We got into the parking lot and walked into the park, and this is one of the strangest entrances I've ever seen, because there really isn't one. You park in this grassy gravel area, and luckily it's free. And you just kind of walk right into the park area. So we walked up to one of the booths and we bought enough ride tickets to get us on everything once and Phoenix a few times. Needless to say, on a day like this, everything was a walk on. We went straight to Phoenix and we got the back row. And after that first ride, I was a little disappointed. I was expecting standing airtime with the buzz bars and the airtime was just pretty average. The rain kept coming down, so we decided to get all the credits just in case the thunderstorm came in and they shut the rides down. We went to Twister, and while we were waiting to board, it started absolutely pouring, and I got one of the most painful rides of my life. I was trying to concentrate on the ride instead of the pain, and I came away thinking the ride was pretty weak. There wasn't any airtime, but it's still a pretty huge woody with good speed. I was just expecting more. I had to break down and buy an umbrella, mainly for my camera because it was impossible to get shots and keep my camera dry without one. We waited undercover for the downpour to stop before going over to Impulse. This was another pretty painful rain ride, but it was a pretty solid zero coaster, and I hope to get on it again when I'm not getting pelted in the face by rain. The last credit of the day was Black Diamond, and that's a dark ride coaster. Luckily, it was inside, and I thought this ride was very well done. I came away very impressed. There was one coaster I was looking forward to that was closed for the day, Flying Turns. This super unique in-house wooden bobsled coaster was probably down due to the water buildup in the track, and that's completely understandable. So I will have to get back here this year to get a ride. We decided to use the rest of our tickets on Phoenix. We had enough for three more rides, but there was one train that begged the ops for another cycle because nobody was waiting for the next train, so they let us go around again. I tried this in the front and the back, and I found the front to be a little bit better. My ultimate judgment was that this is a really fun coaster with good airtime, but it's nowhere near the level of an elite wooden coaster. It barely makes my top 10 woodies and my top 50 coasters. From the first ride on Phoenix to the last, about one hour and 15 minutes passed. We were soaked, we were out of ride tickets, and we were ready to get some photos and leave. I got some good Phoenix shots by walking around the outside of the park where there were some maintenance buildings and cabins. I honestly was waiting for someone to tell me to leave, but nobody did, and I was able to get some pretty decent pictures from back there. We also walked around trying to find some decent souvenirs. We walked around the park for about an hour looking for shops and finally found one outside the park at the very back end between Phoenix and Twister. This place actually sold magnets, so we were happy that we found what we wanted, but honestly, we spent way too much time searching around. But it did give us a nice tour of the park. We were only there for three hours. We went back to the car around 2 p.m., got rid of our soaking socks, and we headed off to finish our day at Dorney Park. So here are some thoughts on the park. This is one of the strangest parks I've ever seen. The parking lot, the park itself, and the campground all mesh together seamlessly. There are no gates or fences anywhere, and it's just weird to be walking in and out of the park and into the back areas. I really like the option to buy tickets or buy an all-day wristband. The all-day wristband is kind of expensive, around $47. So we decided to get enough ride tickets to ride everything once and Phoenix a few times, which was about $22. Each ride is pretty cheap. The big rides are only around $3 and the smaller ones are less. You need to give your tickets to the person at each ride, which was a pain for me because I had to keep them in a plastic bag to keep them from getting soaked. The park is pretty much a giant L. You walk past Impulse once you leave the parking lot and you walk down Knobles Boulevard until you hit Phoenix. And then you can hang a right to get to Black Diamond. That's pretty much the whole park. So I did not have the best experience here thanks to the rain, but I'm trying to look past that to give it a fair shake based on what I saw. 
It has an okay collection of coasters. Phoenix is the star, but to me, it's not a great Woody. I think I need to come back on a dry sunny day to give it a real judgment. This park is so unique that it's hard to point to something that it really needs. Though this seems to be the type of park that would get a ground up wooden RMC. If they're willing to continue down the steel coaster road after getting impulse, perhaps something like a B&M invert makes sense here. Knobles is also a great candidate for a chance hyper GTX. Here's the final ride count. Five on Phoenix, one on Twister, one on Impulse, one on Black Diamond, and zero on Flying Turns. We also skipped Cosmos Curves. The biggest surprise was the layout of the park. Like I said before, no barriers anywhere. The park's just kind of there, and it's hard to tell where it begins and where it ends. And it's not something that you see anywhere else with the exception of maybe Connie at Lake Park. The biggest disappointment was harder to choose. There was the rain, flying turns being closed, Phoenix being kind of a letdown, but I will have to go with Twister. A lot of people rave about this, but it didn't do anything for me, and I was definitely expecting a better ride. So like I said, at 2 o'clock we left for Dorney Park, one of the more forgotten Cedar Fair parks in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Dorney Park has been mostly ignored by the chain for the last decade, but it still has a nice collection of coasters. And this was going to be my second trip, my first one since 2008. While we were driving, we heard that the rides had been closed down due to the storm, but the forecast showed that by the time we got there, it should clear up for a few hours. By the time we got there at 4 o'clock, the rain was light but the rides were reopened. We immediately got food, grilled chicken salads from the 50s style Coasters restaurant. We tried those automated kiosk things that you see at some Cedar Fair parks, and we had some issues with it, but after a long wait, we finally got our food and we found a place to eat that was out of the rain. There were a ton of people in the restaurant, probably trying to get out of the rain, but the park itself was dead. We decided to start from the back and work our way back up to the front. And anyone who's been to Dorney Park knows that their six coasters are split up with three in the front and three in the back. We started off with my favorite in the park, Steel Force. We rode it in the back and then the front, and both rides were okay. These Morgan Hypers really do generally lack the airtime you would expect given the layout, and even though this coaster looks a lot like Magnum, those hills do not throw you out of your seat. My 2018 rides dropped this out of my top 50. We moved on to a walk-on ride on Thunderhawk, a PTC Woody that's pushing 100 years old. It's a solid coaster, but nothing special. Definitely a landmark and a coaster that still holds its own. The last ride in the back of the park is the impulse that I originally rode in 2002 as Superman Ultimate Escape at Six Flags Worlds of Adventure, and then in 2008 at Dorney Park as Voodoo, and now in 2018 as Possessed. So same coaster, third name. It's your standard impulse coaster, and I would definitely recommend riding it in the back for the maximum verticality on the back spike. We went to the front of the park for a back row ride on Hydra, and I like this because it's so unique, but it's still a middle of the road floorless. And then we got two rides on Talon, which is a middle of the road B&M invert. And then we got our one ride on the Wild Mouse. Then back to Hydra for a front row ride. Usually coasters are smoother in the front, but the second half of this coaster in the front was so rattly and painful, it was honestly one of the more painful rides I've ever had on a coaster. I don't know what happened. It wasn't that rough on my first ride in the back, but it was pretty unbearable in the front. So we rode everything we wanted to in less than two hours, and we still needed to wait an hour before we could cash in our dinner with our dining plan, so we went on a photo lap. Because it was pretty cloudy and it was kinda getting late, by now it was around 7pm. The lighting presented a huge challenge for getting good shots, so if you follow me on Instagram and you don't see a lot from Dorney Park, that's one of the reasons why. As soon as we can cash in our dinner, we went to Chickies and Pete's, which is an indoor sit-down restaurant with a waiter. I got the chicken cutlets and the crab fries, which was very good. And it was nice that at a place like this, you could use your dining pass. Just don't forget to tip your waiter. We left around 9 p.m. and it was pouring rain. So we felt pretty lucky that we entirely avoided the rain while we were riding coasters at Dorney Park. We couldn't have timed our trip there any better. So here are some thoughts on the park. The coaster collection they have is really solid. Morgan Hyper, B&M Invert, B&M Floorless, Intamin Impulse, Classic Wooden Coaster, and a Wild Mouse which is always nice to have for younger riders. I think it's kind of sad that I visited this park in 2008 and 2018, and the coasters I rode were identical. I know they got Stinger from Great America in 2012, but they removed it shortly before my trip. Cedar Fair has really been resting on the great rides they put in the park in the early 2000s, but it really is time for something new. The rumors are that attendance really suffers here. And for me, the park was really empty and I walked on everything, but that probably had a lot to do with the weather. The rumor has been that a GCI will go here, which I think is a good fit as a modern Woody to go along with the classic Thunderhawk. But this park would also be a prime candidate for an RMC Raptor also. Here's the final ride count. Two on Steel Force, two on Hydra, 
two on Talon, one on Thunderhawk, one on Wildmouse, one on Possessed, and we decided to skip the Kitty Coaster with Stuck Express. The biggest surprise was how good the weather was when we were riding coasters at the park. It rained right before and right after our riding and picture time, but it was actually really pleasant while touring the park. The biggest disappointment was Steel Force. It ranked pretty high in my top 50 after 2017, but after rewriting it, I found it to really lack the airtime that I remembered in 2008. Also, the rough front row ride on Hydra made me drop it a little bit on my top 10 US floorless coaster list. So that's it for my rain-soaked day at Knobles and Dorney Park. Let me know what your thoughts are on these parks and what additions would benefit them the most. Also, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys all next time.